Acute ischemia, also known as acute coronary syndrome, is caused by rupture of an atheromatous plaque that leads to partial or total occlusion of the coronary artery lumen. ST elevation MI is the marker of complete obstruction of the vessel lumen that results in stop of blood flow. Surface electrocardiogram is the only modality that can help us diagnose ST elevation MI. It can identify the geographic location of the MI and the culprit vessel, additionally, it can help us identify certain complications of acute MI, including heart blocks, bundle branch blocks, bradyarrhythmias, and tachyarrhythmias. Thereby, surface electrocardiogram is the most valuable tool in diagnosing and managing ST elevation MI. The natural course of ST elevation myocardial infarction in untreated patients is as follows. The earliest electrocardiographic finding in ST elevation MI is hyperacute T waves. They are tall, peaked, and symmetric, and occur seconds after the obstruction arise. Hyperacute T waves are accompanied or immediately followed by ST segment elevation. Elevation of ST segment happens within minutes to hours after coronary artery occlusion. If the patient remains untreated, pathological Q waves develop within 6 to 16 hours, and ST elevations begin to normalize. Gradual return of ST elevations to baseline is associated with T wave inversion development, these T wave inversions are so called post ischemic. In summary, the triad of pathological Q wave, ST elevation, and T wave inversion is indicative of post acute phase of ST elevation myocardial infarction. By the passage of time, ST elevations and T wave inversions diminish, while pathological Q waves are generally permanent. After a brief overview on stages of ST elevation MI evolution, it's time to examine EKG criteria for diagnosing acute ST elevation MI. ST elevations with straight or convex ST segments strongly suggest acute transmural ischemia. On the other hand, concave ST elevations are most often not caused by acute ischemia. Note that, benign early repolarization and acute pericarditis are two common causes of concave ST elevation. Pathologic ST segment elevation means at least 1 mm ST elevation at the J point except for leads V2 and V3. Remember that, subtle ST elevations are very common in V2 and V3. It is generally adapted that, in leads V2 and V3, ST elevations equal to or less than 2.5 mm in men younger than 40 year old. ST elevations equal to or less than 2 mm in men older than 40 year old. And ST elevation equal to or less than 1.5 mm in women of any age are all considered normal. Other associated findings that favor ST elevation MI include, reciprocal ST depressions, prolonged QD interval, fragmented QRS complexes, and worsening or new Q waves. As we discussed earlier, the surface electrocardiogram in ST elevation MI provides notable information about ischemic area of left ventricle. The presenting table is demonstrating the relationship between 12 lead EKG and cardiac anatomy. As you see, leads D2, D3, and AVF view the inferior surface which is known as inferior leads. Leads D1 and AVL view the high lateral surface which is known as high lateral leads. V1 and V2 view the septal surface. V3 and V4 view the anterior surface and finally V5 and V6 view the lateral surface. Remember that AVR is so-called neglected lead. ST elevation in AVR is associated with left main coronary artery occlusion. ST elevation spanning from V1 to V3 or V4 is known as enteroseptal. ST elevations that extends from V3 to V6 are so-called enterolateral. ST elevations that involve V1 to V6 is called extensive anterior. Finally, concomitant ST elevations in V1 to V6, D1, and AVL is called extensive enterolateral. Note that, ST elevation MI usually produces reciprocal ST depression in the electrically opposite leads. Reciprocal ST depression is highly in favor of ST elevation MI, 
and excludes benign causes of ST elevation including early repolarization. Reciprocal EKG changes are well defined for lateral, inferior, and posterior ST elevation MI. As this table tells us, inferior ST elevation MI can be associated with reciprocal ST depressions in D1 and AVL, while lateral ST elevation MI can produce reciprocal ST depressions in inferior leads. Also remember that, posterior MI can cause ST depressions in V1 to V4. Let's go through several examples. The present EKG is demonstrating ST elevations in V1 to V4, D1 and AVL with reciprocal ST depressions in inferior leads. Tall T waves in V3 and V4 are present as well. So, this is extensive anterolateral ST elevation MI. Next EKG is demonstrating ST elevations in inferior leads with concomitant reciprocal ST depressions in D1 and AVL that establish acute inferior ST elevation MI. The last example is this EKG that illustrates prominent ST elevations in D1 and AVL with reciprocal changes in inferior leads, so high lateral ST elevation MI is present. Thanks for watching this video. If you are eager to learn more about EKG basics, subscribe me and ring the bell. Wish you all the best. Good luck.